My idea of yoga teacher training and the reality of yoga teacher training, two different things. So I expected there would be a lot of like class time, right? A lot of instruction. No. <laughs> you are engaged the entire time. So there's no sort of sitting back and just sort of half listening and maybe taking a couple of notes. There, there is definitely instruction time, but this weekend especially, um, we were learning how to cue. Bring your arms up over your head, warrior one. We went through um, a, a sample sequence, like child's pose into tabletop, moving into down dog and into plank. And then we would break up into groups and we would guide my virtual friends, through those postures. Back into cactus. And then we moved into standing series. That's a challenge because there are a lot of them. <laughs> Side plank, reverse warrior. So once you've moved through these, when you've been cueing them, and then my other two uh, virtual buddies, and you do these over and over, I'm sore. <laughs> our instructor could tell these people are tired. And she made a really good observation. Yes, we're tired. If you are going in to teach a class and you are tired and you don't really wanna be there, what do you do? She said that you have to step onto your mat and remind yourself that as a teacher, you're there to serve. And you are serving the people who are in that class, who are on their yoga mats, bringing them something good. They're there because they want to be there. And when it becomes not about you, but about them, that can get you into a better frame of mind. Something was said during class that stuck with me. Expression of a posture can carry you through fatigue. Thinking about how that posture is expressed, right? So if you're if you're doing a reverse warrior, exalted, exalted was a word that one of my uh, virtual buddies used. Just really thinking about the um, expression of that posture, it can change your language, it can change the dynamic, and it can help bring not only you out of fatigue, but students as well in your class. I am by nature a fairly structured person. I like a plan, I like to know things weeks out, and I wanna to stick to that, right? I don't want things to change. <laughs> and so when we're in class and um, our teacher is like, okay, so let's run through this sequence example, and then I want you to break off into your groups and teach it. And I'm thinking, wait, aren't we gonna like talk about how to cue it? And, and it just, Throw me for a loop. When we were done queuing and we were done with that activity, we came back to the big group. Uh, she revealed that the whole purpose of not giving us, you know, guidelines before we went into that activity was to find a way to solve problems because there may be a time when we are in class and we're instructing and we get stuck and we need to try to figure out, okay, where do we go next to get out of it? So, duh, what do you know? The teacher knows more than I do. What that taught me was to trust the process. Quit trying to control it. Just trust it. Finally got to break out the coloring book. <laughs> so our next homework assignment is to color the different muscles. We started working on that today. And listen, I mean, I'm not gonna become a doctor or anything, but it's important to know while we move, movement. The goal is to have the least amount of clunkiness and the most effective speech when you are teaching students. So that has required me to get out of my head, more into my heart, and uh, I can tell that moving into March, it's only going to get more interactive, more engaging. There's no sitting on the sidelines. I already feel so much more comfortable. I stepped into this month's yoga teacher training feeling like it was okay if I failed. It was okay if I looked silly. Um, and that in an odd way gave me more confidence. So I've got a lot of practicing to do and in all honesty, I need to practice a lot more than I did last month. I was so focused on the reading and so I'm pumped.